Hello there and welcome back to another ITH video and you join me today in the beautiful Cotswolds in the UK for the launch of this, the BMW M235i Grand Coupe. <laughs> Starting around the front of this M235i Grand Coupe. Right, you've got this new BMW style grille. A lot wider, a couple more angled bits to it and coloured section down the middle. Always used to have separate grills on BMWs, now they're uh, joined up. I quite like it. Big point on this one is we've got this lovely silvery grey finish that is on the grills. It's also on the air intakes and on the mirrors. That's, you only get that on the M235i. Now, down here we have got air intake and another air intake at the side here you'll notice they're both broadly the same shape they like that they like to carry on the shapes through now uh, around the side here as well you've got a lovely silvery gray intake with a duct down the side as well all very sporty I'm, I'm liking it you've got this lovely aggressive shark nose to it at the front here and oh a nice gloss black splitter down the front here as well now some very nice wheels again in the same sort of color as all the other m235i trim bits these are the optional 19 inch wheels comes as 18 inch wheels as standard Okay, so around the side of this 2 Series. Now, the eagle-eyed among you will notice that this is very similar to the 8 Series Grand Coupe, and that is because that's the thing they went for. They wanted a family look to these Grand Coupes, and there's a roof line that swoops all the way down to the very pert rear. You'll notice this is quite a long car. Even though this is based on the 1 Series, uh, same wheelbase, same everything on the chassis, but all that extra 21 centimetres of length comes in in the rear. Now, I think I'm going to have to eat my words here because when I saw the press images of this car, I was a little bit um, <coughs> about it and I didn't think it looked very good. Now, if you're thinking the same, and even if it doesn't come out on camera, I urge you get down to a bin that we do that and take a look at one of these things in person because it looks fantastic. I, I genuinely can't get over the difference between seeing this thing as it's sitting there looks amazing rather than looking slightly dumpy in the press photos so yeah i'm a big fan of this and the biggest difference actually is from the rear okay so around the back of the grand coupe now there's a little uh, lip spoiler here quite like that biggest thing you'll notice actually is along with this trim strip you've got these very long thin wide rear lights they're the same as you get on the 8 series grand coupe similar to the x4 and x6 coupe suvs as well it gives it a much wider stance and it's a bit more butch to it as well down the bottom we've got a sort of faux diffuser kind of thing and some tailpipe trims in the same sort of color as the wing mirrors now important to note down there there are two fat oval pipes within there genuine real exhaust big fan boot whilst i'm here ah, let's get this open now quite a small opening but that is a 430 litre boot in there and that's where all this extra space has come in from the uh, elongated bodywork and it might be quite small but it's a big big load of space in there you could fit about 40 46 large ducks so interior of this m235i grand coupe x drive for want of a better word now first thing you notice are these rather nice new m design seats very supportive in the middle and fairly comfy with extending squabs under the legs big fan now this is where it all makes a big difference in this car very driver focused as it always is in bmws uh, on this M235i you get the digital display, which on all new cars now you're getting these lovely digital displays. Very nice, very clear, big fan. 10 and a bit inch touchscreen on the top of the stack there as well. Climate controls below. Uh, and then this is where all of this tech comes in. This has got a full suite of tech that you would get on even an 8 series this thing is is absolutely packed to the rafters there's an optional head-up display there which is full color and brilliant i must say uh, you've got wireless charging you've got a usb down there down by the gear lever here you've got a whole extra section of uh, buttons and controls you've got engine stop start for all your dynamic modes and all that and a large iDrive version 48 million for the uh, all the different controls on there this has also got the rather odd and uh, 
I don't even know if it's useful or not, but it's this gesture control where I can, you, you do things and it, it, it turns up the volume of you wiggle your fingers and things. I can't personally see how that would ever be more useful than just doing it with a dial down by your fingers, but hey ho. Now, one important thing I need to see is in the back of this being a grand coupe is, is the roof line gonna impact the rear headroom? And the answer is yes, it does somewhat. Uh, firstly, leg room. I know I'm not the best use case, six foot three behind six foot three, but uh, leg room is slightly tight in the back here, but not as bad as headroom. Yeah, th th this sloping roof line, you don't really want to have somebody my height or a full grown large adult in the back of this for too long. I, I wouldn't be very comfy in here, to be honest. Uh, practicality wise, you know, as in the front, you know, you've got big bins and things everywhere down the side and there is two USB-C charging points at the back. Perfect for all you Apple people out there. Now, as with every single hot hatch on the market at the moment, apart from the RS3, we have a two litre turbo four cylinder lump under here. 302 brake horsepower, 450 Newton meters. Uh, it's gonna do about 36 MPG and 153 grams per kilometer of CO2. And what's interesting about this is it is transversely mounted. BMWs always used to be longitudinal. This is now transverse, and it means you get a bit more interior space. Uh, 0 to 60, because it's a bit of a chunky monkey, this one, but 0 to 60 is only 4.9 seconds. Pretty good. So what is this like to drive? Well, I'm in comfort mode because obviously I always try and start in comfort, and it's fairly comfortable. That, that's how I'll say it, to be honest. It's still quite a busy ride. I mean, it's on 19-inch wheels, so it's never going to be billiard table smooth, but no, it, it's, it's fairly comfy. Um, but honestly, nobody wants to know what this thing's like in comfort. I mean, you put it, it's an M235i, it's got 300 horsepower. Into sport we go, straight away, you can feel through the seat of your pants, everything's got a little bit tighter. The steering's definitely a lot dartier. Uh, there's a lot more noise, but I'm not entirely convinced that it's all coming from the exhaust. It sounds very fake when the bass comes in as well. To me, that's a little bit too much. I wouldn't mind a bit more realistic intake and exhaust noise. I mean, I've got a de-restricted bit coming up here, so I'm going to drop this down so we can maybe hear a bit of exhaust. It's a, it's a fairly anodyne sound, really. You're never going to get the most thrilling, amazing sound out of a two litre four cylinder. But the question is, can it deliver in the fun stakes? So what I can take away from that little squirt I just had then is uh, this car is deceptively fast. I, you know, I just floored it and we just took some really big roads, lots of turns. Didn't think it was that quick. Then I looked down at the speedo and realized I was going a lot, a lot faster than I thought I was. But I saw that speed on the head-up display, and in this instance, it is brilliant. On the Mini Electric we drove, it was one of those little plastic flip-up bits that projected onto it, and they're okay, but they're more of a gimmick. The one on this is a proper full-color display, and I tell you what, it is brilliant. It's crystal clear. You've got all the sat-nav directions, you've got what road you need to take, your speed, everything on there. And I mean, that is seriously impressive. Unfortunately, it's not the cheapest thing in the world. On this particular press car, it's got it as part of uh, the technology pack, which is about 1,500 pounds, which, yeah, it's quite a lot. So along with that technology pack, there are a few other options uh, on this car. You know, there's the M plus pack and all that kind of stuff. This is a press car. They're always, you know, spec'd up to the nines. Uh, the actual list price of this car is 37,255, which is fairly reasonable for a car of this size, performance, all that kind of stuff. That's pretty good. It's definitely towards the higher end of the price bracket compared to some of the rivals. Certainly not when compared to the CLA 35, for example. Um, but what you could do instead of paying 37,255 is head to botb.com where you could get a ticket for this car and you could win one and have it on your driveway for under two pounds. BOTB give away a car every single week. You have to be un over 16 to play. There's actually over 160, 170 cars that you can play for and they give away someone's dream car every single week. So big thanks to them for making these videos possible and please go and check them out. Right, back to my driving. So when it comes to the handling of this, 
Uh, this is the M235i is X drive, so that means it's BMW's all wheel drive system. Being this is based on the one series, that is predominantly front wheel drive. It's got a transverse engine, so it's a front wheel drive car effectively, and that power can go to the rear when you need it. So this is very much just like a normal front wheel drive, 302 brake horsepower hot hatch. Uh, but if things get a little bit squirrely, it takes power to the rear as well, and it sorts you out and stops you being an idiot, basically. Now the 235i does have a limited slip diff at the front as standard, and you know what, you can feel it. I mean, it's all gonna be working in conjunction with the all-wheel drive system, but when you barrel into a corner, you can brake quite late, even though I'm not a fan of the brakes, and when you put your foot down, you can definitely feel it. You can feel it tugging. So the front end sort of tightens up and pulls you around the corner, and you can definitely feel that there is a little bit of sort of just tweaking coming from the back as well. So yeah, stable, definitely makes you feel in control and uh, quite confident inspiring. But then again, it would be, it's a BMW. So there you go, that was the BMW M235i Grand Coupe. It's a very stylish, very capable alternative to the hot hatch and you're not gonna be at all unhappy if you uh, get one of these. Now I've gotta say a huge thank you to BMW for inviting us down to this amazing location here in the Cotswolds. And again, a big thanks to BOTV for making these videos possible. Winner every week, loads of cars to choose from, tickets from 85p, go and check them out. Plenty more videos to come from us, so uh, please hit the subscribe button and the like button, because we like all those things. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.